How's it going? This is Hoyman and today we're taking a look at the SH Figure Arts Cure Yell figure. So this is pretty much, in my opinion, the darkest hour in the pre-cure figure arts line in terms of just where the line is heading and the sales rates and stuff and just overall quality as well. But for now, the packaging, again, this is a web exclusive figure. Even the main character is web. And this is pretty much the start where, because it's a web exclusive figure, there's no window to see the figure inside. So it does kind of detract a bit, but at the same time, it is understandable. But despite that, the packaging does still look pretty nice. It has that really soft textury premium feel, similar to like mobile phone boxes. And then the image here itself is kind of like slightly embossed. So it does have a nice effect and overall the packaging does look nice, but I do feel it is just lacking the window to see the figure inside. But um, moving on, you do have a picture of the figure on the top. Same for both sides. And again, the same texture feel does continue. Legal stuff for the bottom. And then the back you have various more pictures of the vigor. And then to open the box, just lift open the side flap. And then lift open the front cover. And there's the figure all together with her accessories. So first you do get some instructions showing what a figure comes with and how to operate the accessories. So here's the actual figure, and for the most part, this is still a really nice looking figure. It's really nicely sculpted, really nicely detailed, and overall there is quite a lot of paintwork on this figure as well. So looking at the face, I feel that they have captured the likeness of the character really well. Looks just like her. And then you have her iconic fringe on the hair, it's really nicely sculpted. And the hair itself is a nice matte pink finish, but there's a lot of darker shades and washes to really bring out the details. So the back you have all these strands of hair that's individually sculpted, and it's even sculpted underneath it as well. Looks very nice, has a lot of motion in it to add a lot of dynamic sort of wind. And then you have her kind of pigtails on her ribbons as well. Again, they're very nicely sculpted and detailed. And then these thinner parts are somewhat more flexible, but they're still solid to the point where you have to be careful you don't break them. And then moving down to her outfit, really nice pink dress. And then you have the nice pouch and the ribbon here. And then you move on to these translucent parts on her biceps here. They look really nice and add a nice effect. And then you have the cheerleading wristbands as well. You can see all the texturing is in the sculpt. And then these parts are solid, so you have to be careful we don't break them. And then moving on to the dress, which is probably the most eye-catching piece. It does look really nice. So it's a translucent piece, but you can still see all the sculpting in the skirt throughout it. And it has a really nice effect. And because it's translucent, you can see into the dress underneath, which is a nice pink, and it's also sculpted. So I do feel that although it's translucent, it does look a bit thick, and that makes it a bit difficult to see the skirt underneath. So if it was just a bit thinner, or if it was more clear, so you can see the skirt underneath, I think it would have been for a nicer effect. But as it is now, it still looks nice, but it's just a little bit difficult to see the skirt underneath. But you do have the large ribbon on the back. And again, it's a solid piece, so you have to be careful of those. And then moving down to her shoes, really nicely sculpted and detailed. And then the ribbons are a solid piece, so again, you have to be careful you don't break them. And then, like I said, the paintwork is very nice and clean as well for the most part. Haven't really seen any paint defects or anything there. So that's nice. So for articulation, the neck is on a single ball joint, so she can look down that much. 
And although the hair is a solid piece, it's not really that heavy, so it doesn't weigh down the head or anything. And then she can look up about that much, but the hair does restrict the movement a bit. She can tilt her head side to side, as well as twist. And moving on to the shoulders, which is probably my main gripe with this figure is, because of these translucent parts, it does kind of make the arm not fully bend all the way down. So arms are always kind of at an angle. So that's my main gripe, but it's nothing too major. But it is on a board joint, so you can move the arm about however you like, but there's no pull out method. So for the most part, it is quite restricting, but it is on a hinge, so you can bring an arm out to the side. You can bring an arm forward, but again, it's always at an angle because of this part. Bring her arm back. And then she does have the bicep swivel. And then she's got the single jointed elbow. And then she's got the ball jointed wrist. And for whatever reason, I mentioned this with Cure Bloom and Cure Egret is that they improved the wrist joints by turning them to pegs. But for the hug toe pre-cure figures, they've gone back to the ball jointed wrist, which I'm not too sure if that was the best decision since these are really thin joints and they can easily break. So you just have to be careful of them, especially with the hug to ones because they just feel even more fragile than the previous pre kill figures. But moving on to the torso, it's on a board joint, so she can't really lean forward a whole lot and can't really lean back that much either. She can lean side to side, not really a whole lot, and then can twist slightly as well. So she's very restricted in the torso. Down to the legs. The translucent part of the skirt is a solid piece, but the skirt underneath is softer material, and it's split into two segments. So the waist is on a board joint, so you can move her legs about however you want, as well as twist. And then each leg is on a board joint. So she can kick about that far to the side. Kick forward that much. And then kick back that much. She has the thigh swivel. And then she also has the single jointed knee. And then for the ankle, it's on a board joint. So you can go back that much. But it kind of looks like her ankle is broken when you put it all the way back. You can bring her foot forward, tilt her foot side to side, and then also twist. So she has all the articulation you'd expect a figure arts figure to have, but for the most part, she's really restricted. The torso, you can't really get a whole lot of movement. The arms are quite restricted because of these parts here. The head is pretty restricted because of the hair. And then the legs, they are quite restricted because of the skirt as well. So you're not really going to be able to get too many poses out of this figure, but you should still be able to get the main ones that you'd want. But that's the figure. Let's take a look at the accessories. So for faces, she comes with a default smiling face, a winking face, a happy open mouth face, and then an angry shouting face. For hands, she comes with a pair of fists, and then a small range of hands, so two open palmed hands, one pointing hand, one more styled posing fist, and then two hands to hold her weapon. And then she also comes with a main weapon, which is nicely sculpted and detailed, has nice use of the translucent parts for the pink, and then she comes with a chi leading part as well, which are nicely sculpted. And then there's not really a whole lot of detail, it's mainly just the matte yellow finish, but the sculpt does look nice. And then on the inside, you can see the letters R and L, which tell you which arm they go onto. And then she also comes with a display base. So my final thoughts are, 
Overall, this is still a solid figure, but like I said at the beginning, this is pretty much the beginning of the dark age of the pre-cure figure arts figures. And that's mainly because at this point, the pre-cure figures just aren't selling that well. So with the Hugto pre-cures, they're releasing very slowly and Bandai opted to kind of lower the cost on these figures. So they come with less accessories. The articulation engineering isn't quite as dynamic as the previous figures and overall the build quality and some of the plastic used just feels a little bit cheaper. But again, I still feel that despite that, this figure still looks really nice, still looks like the character and has a nice use of the translucent piece as well. And for the most part, it is a nice looking figure, but you're just not going to get the same quality of range of accessories and dynamic poses with this figure really. But if you are a fan of this character or the show, then I can still recommend this figure, but because she is a web exclusive figure, she's quite pricey, so keep that in mind. But that's my review, thank you for watching, and enjoy some pictures.